Caden Primo makes arguably the save of the year already. And while Montreal came up short in this game versus the New Jersey Devils, a lot of players really shined and there's still a lot of promise with this roster. But before we get into that game reaction, we got to talk a bit about a crazy stat that shows that Mike Madison is a top five skating defenseman in the NHL. We probably already knew that. Plus, a pretty brutal injury update about David Savard that you probably already heard about. So stick around for all that on this episode of Habs Digest. Um, just quickly before we get into the video, we got to talk about David Savard. And of course, if you watch the game, you know he didn't play. Um, but if you didn't know exactly why, if you didn't know why Gustav Lindstrom was called up on an emergency basis. By the way, he played pretty well, but again, we'll talk about that later. Uh, David Savard is out indefinitely with an upper body injury. Now, look, Jesse... I know a lot of people know about this injury already, but we got to talk about, like, look, kind of what I said before the show, after that crazy penalty kill shift he had, where he clearly took a, like a hard shot off the hand or wrist or arm, hope it's not broken, we'll see what happens, but if anyone deserves maybe a couple weeks off after a shift like that, it's David Seva. It is, you know, but he definitely gained a lot of respect, you know, I think from a lot of Habs fans, you know, sometimes people like to murmur a little bit about his game, but to be honest, that shift was just all heart. Because what he did there is he took a solid wrist shot, you know, slap shot right to his wrist. It ended up breaking. But guess what? He wasn't done. He started blocking more shots even after that, putting himself in the line of fire even more. And that's when his actually his actual blade for his skate got shot right off. He's still there on one leg, you know, like that was amazing heart. And that matters a lot for this young team to see. And that really rallied you know the team you know the fact that we're that we're competing that hard you know it was really amazing so hard to see him go out for such an extended period of time six to eight weeks you know you just gotta hope that you know Kane Gooley's not gonna be out for for too long to to come and help out you know we have load management in the NBA and we have hockey players doing this every single night right it's crazy the passion these guys have for the game David Savard you know for all his shortcomings in which there are there are a few for sure he is never afraid to put himself in front of the line of fire. He is always the first one on the ice. Last year, if you guys remember, for a good chunk of the year before he started missing some games due to injury, he was leading the league in block shots or was at least top two for a long, long stretch. And that's the one thing. Like, David Savard is a solid shutdown defenseman. He has some drawbacks, but man, is he an important player to have around. And that mentality, that effort is always valuable to a team. So let's hope he gets better soon. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll just have to see who steps up in the meantime. But uh, speaking of defensemen stepping up, you know, this is actually kind of funny. We had this to talk about in the video before his goal tonight, which again, we'll talk about in just a few minutes. Stick around with us. But uh, Mike Madison's crazy. So there was a, there was a graphic posted uh because the nhl has this new nhl edge so there's a bunch of cool new statistics and this one showed the most miles covered by a defenseman some of the top skaters and you see mike madison is tied for number four with 9.1 miles only behind ivan provorov noah hannepin and charlie mcavoy and if you go a little bit further down the list to number 42 pretty far down the list it's david savard with 8.5 miles right which is still like the difference between david savard and someone like dougie or even like what 12 Shea Theodore and David Savag is the same distance between Savag and Adam Pellick at the bottom of the list. So wow. it's kind of crazy that we see Mike Matheson, especially, and even David Savag on this list. But, uh, you know, we knew Matheson was a great skater. And even though he maybe didn't show uh, a ton of flash in the first few games before tonight, it's, it's awesome to see that the stats are still saying, like, this dude can move. And that's so important for this team as well is to have that mobile defenseman. And not only does he have, like, such great cardio to be able to get all over the ice, but he really showed in tonight's game that even after the end of a long shift, if it comes to that physical play, he has the strength as well to, to really just knock a guy over, to truck a guy over. Like tonight, he was just like, get off of me, you know, to the defending guy. It's really knocked him over. I was like, wow, Matheson, like, you don't think so, but he's actually really strong and, you know, obviously cardio. So, you know, really great role model. I know a lot of the Habs players say all the time of, such a great example of a player that really takes such great how you know care of himself just like an athlete you know through and through so i mean this is amazing to have for this team yeah so so cool i mean always fun to watch madison play and always cool to see stats that show habs players near the top and again david survive this list i mean look we've seen him pull a few deeks but still it's very 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 interesting surprised it wasn't maybe uh someone else in the team then again i can't really think of who else would crack that list baron hasn't played enough Gooley got hurt so yeah i guess it makes some sense um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's just as good of a transition as any to talk about this game. But, um, Jesse, I, I think one of, one of the feelings is, you know, we're very positive about this game, but there are some things that need to change. I just wanted to open this section, um, just to discuss very briefly, cause I want to talk a lot of positives about this game. Cause there's so many, 
a bit about the power play and a bit about the turnovers. And we discussed this a little bit. There was a lot of this drop passing stuff. And look what happened when Mike Matheson decided, no, nah, no, nah, screw that. I'm going in myself. Look what happened. <laughs> he scored a beautiful goal. Um, at this point, the power play is becoming a joke. It's like New Jersey had, again, arguably more chances shorthanded than Montreal actually had on the power play. And while there were some decent chances, um, it just, again, is falling flat. And I... D- I, look, I feel like we're just a broken record. It's every single night. Maybe we don't need to harp on this too long, but I really feel like that just Madsen seeing him do that just sparked this this conversation again to say like, come on, look what we can do and look at what we have been doing. No, that's it. It's And we have been doing this since last year, the draw passes. You would think if last year, if our power play wasn't the best and this was kind of how we set up our power play all the time last year with the draw pass, I you might want to revisit that and kind of do something else. I think that that might be part of the issue. I think there might be, you know, some players like Anderson's more of a Mm North-South type of player. He's not so much of a static uh, power play type of player. So I think that we will see some movement on that. Like, they did have a good power play early on in the game, right? But you can't just have one good power play really out of, out of all of them. So, you know, I think it's still definitely a work in progress, but it, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, you definitely want to get the momentum, but you also want to use the ability, even if you're not scoring, but to kind of strike some fear into the heart of the other team. If anything, just kind of tire them out, right? Hem them in the zone, tire them out from defending, uh, which we're, we're not able to kind of get that uh, sustained pressure mm-hmm. really for right now. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think we're going to keep... Uh, Keep working on it, but uh, it definitely definitely needs to get better. Yeah, that and, and a lot of these random turnovers too, not even necessarily on the power play. There's these drop passes to no one. It happened about four or five times tonight. We've seen Newhook do it, even Monahan tonight. Um, but regardless, those are some things that they're going to work on for sure, some kinks to work out. But uh, as we mentioned, uh, it's just sort of speaking of the power play, a nice positive thing, talking about 5v5. Just imagine if Montreal was good on the power play and they had stats like this. Now, this is before coming into tonight's game. So this has changed a little bit because New Jersey scored quite a few goals, 5v5 tonight. Um, But Montreal coming into this game has given up two goals against in five on five with, uh, yeah, 15 goals, 16 goals for, 15 goals against, two of them against in 5v5. The number one team in goals given up against 5v5. Now, again, I don't believe they're number one anymore after tonight. But still, it's very clear that they they thrive in 5v5. And and I feel like guys, like you said, Anderson and Gallagher really play to that strength. And I felt like tonight the Habs did a really good job of breaking out of the zone. We saw guys like Justin Barron scoring again on a very similar type of goal. Long rebound, pots it, being in the right spot. Two goals in two games for Justin Barron. Hey, he's making his case for sure. Um, we saw that Matheson goal, and while they only had two, there was a lot of great chances. Like, Monaghan got robbed in tight by uh, by Vanacek. We had a nice break with Newhook and Slaff at one point. Slaff looked really upset he didn't get that pass. I think everyone in the building thought he was getting that pass on the two-on-one, but Newhook decided to shoot it is what it is. Um, but all in all, if you want to just pause and take a look at the stats, you can. Of course, Matheson with the goal, um, Barron with the goal, Pizzetta with the assist there. Um, a little bit of a negative tonight with the face-off percentages from Evans and Monaghan, who were two of the top three in the NHL coming into tonight, but they both kind of fell off a bit. But uh, but Jesse, a lot of positives to take from, from this game tonight. I mean, for me, I feel like the, the star of the show was really the defenseman. It was Barron and Matheson, um, but uh, who, who else did you have in mind? Maybe Primo? Well, I would say, even though we lost tonight, there's something that just makes me happy to see in Gallagher after a long shift, just go to the bench, slam the door, he's yelling and cussing. And there's just something about that that just makes me happy. It's beautiful, really, you know? But yeah, I think, you know, again, you know, the five versus five was, you know, even though we let in a couple, it still was pretty good, mm-hmm. you know? But again, just some bad penalties. Yeah. Again, you know, it's like everybody was just seen, they had. Yeah, like it's just I'm gonna take my turn to just take a really ill-advised penalty far from from my net. I'd like to ask you, Josh, like, what do you think the Habs need to do to stop taking so many penalties? Marty needs to break out the meat of stick. Um, that no, realistically, yeah. I think uh, could be. <laughs> well, I I mean, like, do you think the NHL will allow <laughs> that? Like on the bench, like. Put your hands, <laughs> take your gloves. No, back in the day, we're not gonna. Sure. Well, we're not. Look, we're not gonna advocate for that on this channel. But it might be interesting. But realistically, Jesse, I think the, the real answer is it's tough to say if there's even one thing because these guys are so young, and I think it's again just a learning experience. And you know, over time, like Montreal has a lot of depth right now, but they don't necessarily have a ton of NHL level guys who are ready to step in at any given moment. And I feel like you know, if people are taking bad penalties, not playing great. A lot of these guys maybe don't necessarily have a threat to come from underneath you. And I don't think that's exactly a great reason necessarily to stop taking penalties. But I think it's just a combination of everything. Like 
a lot of these guys are still trying to prove themselves so i think they're playing a little more aggressive than maybe they would normally do um especially with a lot of guys coming up behind them not a ton of pressure there's a decent bit of job security but also just being young and still learning the game right playing defense is uh, like and a lot of these penalties are coming from defense and we saw baron with one we saw jack eye with one these are the these are the common things right and playing defense a lot of these guys peak later than forwards do so it's or at least you know when you're coming into the league you really get your feet under you a lot later than forwards do so i feel like that could 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 be a decent reason too what do you think it's, yeah no it's definitely it i think a part of it is just a really young team we're the third youngest team in the nhl but i think a part of it too is it's so important to be aggressive and it's something that we love in a player like jack eye mm -hmm. But you got to pick your spots yeah. because now he's starting to take too many penalties. It wasn't Arbor Jack guy's best game tonight. Um, you know, we, we love that edge to his game. And of course, you're going to take a little bit more penalties than the average Joe when you're that type of player. But now it's it's becoming too much. And, and it's, it's a common theme. And I think it will be something, again, you can kind of chalk it up to experience. It will be something that gets better. But again, it is something that, that does need to be improved on. It is a fair question, like all the same, like, when will Marty kind of start kind of tightening the belt, so to speak, on on those penalties, you know, and kind of asking a little bit more for that discipline? I think you want to be patient with a young team, but we're also looking to have a little bit more accountability this year as well, which I think is important. Yeah, maybe maybe the belt instead of the meter stick. That you just made me sort of think of that's another <laughs> idea. Um, but no, I think you're very right, right? And uh, th there's still a lot of kinks to work out. But even the, like the Habs looked really good on the second night of a back to back against a really really talented New Jersey Devils team, where Jack Hughes is just playing the best hockey of anyone in the NHL right now in the world. Let's be honest. Um, but a couple of quick notes before the video is over. Tanner Pearson, I thought, looked solid again tonight, Jesse. He just looks like he's always in the right spot. Uh, while Monaghan wasn't great on the dot, he's certainly creating chances again. A couple of little advice turnovers. Uh, the defense was meh. But Caden Primo, I'm just going to play this one more time. You hope NHL, please don't come after us. Look, we're just we're just trying to show this spectacular. Oh, my gosh, save. And, um, but, yeah, um, just quick thoughts before the video ends. What did you think about Caden Primo's season debut? I thought he started really hot, and a lot of the goals were just tough to stop maybe one he could have had but uh but man he was he was all over the place i thought his positioning looked uh, a lot better tonight than it did pretty much any time we've seen him before well i was happy just to see him in nets period he looked a lot more confident tonight and there was a really great example of that there was a jam play at the net with hughes where he really just stood his ground he didn't overreact he just stood his ground and calmly just kind of absorbed the puck and i thought his rebound control for the large part was very very good i honestly was really impressed because this wasn't an easy game we were kind of throwing them to the wolves let's say like your first game in the nhl in a while is going to be against a lot of people stanley cup's favorites in the new jersey devils you know and of course you could say there's no easy games in the nhl but all the same you know i think he he really played well i think that this was a big game for him and I think that the Habs management is going to be happy as well with how he played. Yeah, for sure. He definitely earned himself another start. We don't know how soon that's going to be. I mean, we know Monty and Allen are going to be the guys going forward. Allen was actually the, the scratch officially tonight with, with Monty being the backup. But, uh, but yeah, Allen deserved a bit of a night off after that shelling he got from, well, shelling of shots. Phenomenal performance against Buffalo, of course. But, uh, but yeah, very interesting to monitor that situation going forward. Awesome save. Though. That's going to make the highlight reel, and that's how we're going to remember this game, not the 5-2 to two loss. But, yeah, we got a couple days before the Habs' next game, and it's been really exciting to watch some Habs hockey this year. Even with the injuries, it's cool to see all the young guys stepping up. And, hey, I guess we'll just have to wait and see who steps up next. But that'll do it for this episode of Habs Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate all the support. We'll be here all season long. I'm Josh Goss for my co-host, Jesse Poitier. We'll catch you in the next one.